have to use Cypher. It's a noisy arena today, but I feel like we can still go a few decibels higher. So please make some more noise as we go into our big daddy of team games, Dota 2 by Valve Corporation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the U Cypher League. My name is Vivek, with me is CloudX, and you're watching Akramux on the Radiant, facing off versus Sheridals on the Dyer. Now, Mama Sita and his boys had a little bit of tough luck yesterday versus the Marksman. It was the very first game in the new meta, in the new patch, but uh, they're riding on a wave of momentum here. They've done reasonably well in Counter-Strike, and let's hope they can carry this forward to Dota as well. Yeah, I mean, the bright side of them uh, playing the first game on the new meta is that they're the first ones to get any, any sort of learning experience out of it. They've also had the opportunity to watch a lot more Radiant's pro international Dota back. on the new patch, and that's really the best way to learn. I'd like to see what Sheridals are coming into this game with. Akramux, they're gonna start with a Batrider ban. Remember, one of the major changes is that you now have three bans in the first phase. Let's see how they choose to spend these bans. Ban. Ever so precious bans. Doom's gonna be removed by Akramux. Um, I'm left Here's scratching my head at this. Not ban. too sure why you'd ban a Doom this I mean, early on. Doom got a couple of buffs. He has Cleave as a talent. Uh, Moon gold per minute with Devour or uh, some such thing. But uh, yeah, I, I understand the Batrider ban. Uh, simply because Khan's A is good on the Batrider, B, I think Batrider is one of the offlaners that's going to get picked in more and more in the set. He's somewhat self-sufficient and despite not having the Iron Five Talon, he can still jungle, jungle to some extent now. with Sticky Napalm and Firefly. And yeah, he's always a good source of initiation. First pick for Radiant's the Akramunks is going to be that Bane. I still hope he doesn't pick. go to the mid lane. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Bane love being shown here. Akramunks choosing to pick it up as their first pick. It worked out well for the Yakshas earlier on, but uh, may I wonder if it's going to work out for Bane Dyer's for the Akramunks this time around. Bane. We've seen Night Bane being run in the middle lane. I'm not personally a fan of that, and I'd like to see this as a five position support Bane coming out from Akramunks. That's something I can get behind, but. I still feel like it's a situational pick. I don't think the enfeebled damage steal is really a, a reason to be early picking the Bane up. It, it, it is situational. I mean, you you could really itemize against it. Five you could pick a draft remaining. that doesn't rely so heavily on one person uh, needing to not have enfeebled upon him. There are a lot of things you can do. One thing though is that uh, the Bane can TP and prevent ganks from taking place simply because a Nightmare can keep that Night Stalker away and um, yeah, it's always good setup for a multitude of things and now the Invokers, I mean I'm really curious to see the Invoker get any place simply because of how Cataclysm works. Mm -hmm. It's the new minus 80 second, 18 second Tornado cooldown reduction talent, level 20 Cataclysm with a Ravage. Uh, I mean, that's a highlight reel just waiting to happen right there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm surprised it's not out already. I'm, I'm sure somebody's done it by Someone's now. Someone's done it. If not versus humans versus bots, that's yeah. a guarantee. Shedders will go with the standard tried and tested old meta heroes. The blue freaks are going to come out. Night Stalker and Disruptor as the first two for them. Can't really fault them for these picks. Night Stalker is still a fairly potent roaming four position. Can turn the tides of battle. Can manage to get you that advantage in the middle lane as well. Mm -hmm. But I think this is where the Bane can hold some value as well. Ten One of the seconds. ways that the Night Stalker pressures you in the middle lane is by running under your tower and getting a lot of damage dished Five out upon you. By using the Nightmare, you essentially trap him under the tower, smack him with your physical damage hits, and essentially allow enough time for your support or your middle laner to get away. There's also the fact that Enfeeble is fantastic versus the Night Stalker in the night time. You'll take away his damage, sure he's got attack speed and move speed, but he's got nothing to hit you with. Yeah. Uh, which I presume is going to be the reason for the Night Stalker putting an early point in the here, Just to uh, get the silence off from the Bane and then Bane is... I mean, he's going to be woefully underwhelming. Uh, Akramux, they pick up their roaming phone in the form of the Spirit Breaker. I like this hero to some extent, simply because of where Shrines are now. It's a little harder Ten to seconds. access the mid lane and the off lane. Heck, even the safe lane to some extent. Five seconds so, remaining. You, you need 
fours and fives that can really rotate and have Radiance effective rotations. You don't want to pick too passive a fourth or a fifth early on in the laning phase. And if that is the case that you do end up picking something that's a bit too passive, you can be you can be pressured early on. Yeah. It's only up to the other team to recognize that the supports are going to TP on a shrine, going to TP on a tier one, and heck, if they're passive, there's not much they can do. The yeah. spell breaker Ten can move across the map early on. So one now. less spoken synergy here that Shirdils could pull out is between the Spectre and the Night Stalker. I believe Desolate now takes away your vision if you've been tagged yeah. by it as well. And Night Stalker, That's a by virtue of his him being the king of the night, takes away your vision in the night time as well. Right. So, I mean, it's it's Ten a really small seconds. and a really gimmicky lineup Radiant that they could get themselves going back. with to pick up the Spectre. But we know that Spectre has been hot stuff at U Cipher Season 1. Mm -hmm. it, it reduced your vision by a fair bit. And... I mean, it's going to take communication to know where your teammates are to some extent, probably looking at the mini-map. And uh, it's going to take a horn, a couple of heroes out of position, and then you're pretty much fighting a battle blind. Really not knowing where the rest of the team is. So, Akramux chose to ban the Sven and the Queen of Kings. They've taken away a source of physical DPS and a source of magic or pure DPS. Five With seconds the remaining. lockdown available from the Bane, the Enfeebled to help take away some of that damage. I'm not entirely certain the Sven was the smartest ban here. Yeah. Pretty much goes the same for the Queen of Pain. I feel like the Spirit Breaker is good enough to pressure her in the early and mid game stages. Not entirely sold on those bans from them. On the other side, though, Shirdils did ban out the Spectre, so they're not going to have the opportunity of running that duo themselves, Radiance but they will get themselves pit. a Dark Sphere. And a Dark Sphere in the absence of any sort of Dispel, any sort of Oracle Fortunes and Purge coming out. So, that Dark Sphere Night Stalker combination is still going to work wonders for them. Mm -hmm. Yep, Iron Shell, the Night Stalker, he just runs at you with that extra movement speed, and maybe with the fun trip, you can just run down the bane early on. And, um, Five I, I like that as a pick because it's so crucial to pick off laners that can somewhat be self-sufficient in the lane. The Darkseer is one of them. Um, There's also the obvious synergy between the Disruptor and the Darkseer, right? The vacuum yeah. into the Static Storm. It's a disaster waiting to happen. I'm, I've also seen a video with the Darkseer having parallel walls as one of his ultimate spells now. So there's that to be thrown into the mix as well. So. A lot of new stuff going to be coming out here on this particular matchup. I'd love to see some parallel wall shenanigans coming out from them. But um, I'm curious to see if we're going to see any of those new items being picked up. I mean, earlier on we did see uh, Yakshas picking up the Kaya on the Tinker. I'd love to see one of those Meteor Hammers coming out. I feel like that's an item that's just waiting to be nerfed into the ground. Given its potential at pushing towers, it's basically Warlocks, Warlocks ult that you can purchase in-game. Mm -hmm. so it seems a bit unfair to me. Either way, Akramux have the third pick on the board here and they are taking their time. They've dipped into the reserve time now. 50 seconds on the clock before they're given a random pick. Yeah, I mean, the plan for Akramux was to pick up the pain, but they didn't really think this through when... Dyer's oh, turn to be. Have we missed any significant changes on this hero? I mean, usually when you read patch notes, you scroll to the bottom and a Baron starts with an A, so he's probably the first hero who's going to be uh, thrown into your face. He did change uh, his talents a little bit. <laughs> well, a Baron does have synergy with the Spirit Breaker, yeah. so that's what they've got going for them. Drop the shield, let him run into remaining. battle. He's uh, also one of those heroes that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe versus the Darkseer. So if Akramux decides to run this as a safe lane, a Baron, or alternatively they choose to run an aggressive tri lane, a Baron can duke it out with the Darkseer and have a ball of a time. Fourth pick, Sherdils, uh, thinking about this quite hard. They dipped into their reserve clock as well. So They're Mama looking... Sita is their mid laner. The Priestess of the Moon, uh, the Mirana, as well as the Queen of Pain have been banned out. I think to some extent that Queen of Pain ban was targeted at Mama Sita. He plays the Viper a fair bit. Um, what else? What else have I seen him play? Have we seen an Invoker for Shazils yet? Oh, huh. no. Not not over the games that we casted just I don't yet. know if that's the best choice though, given that there's no reliable lockdown. <coughs> Alright, they're gonna go with the Puck. Radiant okay, strong team fight is what Shazils seem to be uh, aiming for right now. And like you mentioned, I think it's all the more important that someone like the Disruptor picks up the Meteor Hammer. It's, I mean, after three seconds of channeling, it basically does 60 damage per second uh, to structures. 
10 seconds. Uh, in a 300 AOE, structures in a 300 a AOE and... Uh, Five seconds remaining. I can kind of get behind the mindset that Shadewills are going into this with. They've recognized that physical DPS may not be the way to go because of the pain. You might as well pick up whatever magic damage you can throw at your opponents. The puck kind of fits into that lineup, but I'm curious to see what they've got on their last pick here because they are going to need something to take down towers. That's the one missing element in their lineup. Huh. The dire get a what's, man. what's a safe laner that's good at taking towers and doesn't get bothered by the bane? I, I don't think the perfect hero exists, but what comes close? Draw Ranger, maybe? Yeah. So, Reflection is a deep buff. I'm not saying TA. At level 20. Ten seconds. Okay, apologies. It's a level 20. And it's unlikely that we'll see a safe lane. Five yeah, seconds I haven't seen remaining. it in a while. But Here's the I haven't seen it ever. Band. I think they should probably just pick up something like the Terrible. Oh yeah, Illusions uh, is one way to go. Akramuk's if you're not sure who to invade, right. might as well give them a whole I, bunch. I don't think Akramuk's have an answer to a Terrible pickup. It's going to be a little... Uh, Scramble for them if Shadows do decide to pick up the Terrorblade. But Akramax does have the Blood Seeker who's not too shabby versus the Terrorblade himself. Okay, they're and gonna ban out the Juggernaut. Five seconds which remaining. Radio. Oh wow, okay, Akramax are gonna pick up the Terrorblade himself. Turn to pick. Hmm. Can't say I didn't see this coming. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I feel like Sheridils has enough to deal with them though. I yeah, exactly. I think Sheridils has enough. It's a little unfortunate that they banned out seconds. the Earth Shaker, but what can they pick that does well versus the Terrible? They still have Five their reserve time. Remaining. They need a safe lane code that does does well versus the Terrible. Do you think Luna does well versus the Terrible? Yeah, Terrible? well she does. I was actually thinking about the Luna myself, but then you're gonna have to deal with the Bane enfeebling you. Enfeeble is fantastic versus the Monkey King as well. So I'm not entirely hero. sure if this is the way to go, but Hey, at least he's an elusive hero. Right now, the only thing to see him atop the treetops is the Spirit Breaker charging at him. And if I'm not mistaken, Blood Dried gives, gives flying vision as well, so maybe you'll be able to spot him up in the trees then. But they don't have a way to break those trees, which might come back to hurt them later on. There's also the fact that uh, if the Monkey King's not the one outputting damage, uh, they're gonna have to rely entirely on the Puck to do that work. And Puck is the source of magic damage, which can be dealt with with a late game BKB. So I'm a little worried for Sheldrills here. I feel like that Bane first pick, it's actually worked out in their favour now. Uh, there is one problem with the Sheldrills is that they somewhat struggle to take down buildings in my opinion. Uh, I mean, that's one of many struggles, right? You, their, their team fight is strong. Look at it Monkey way. King. Look at, it, look at it this way. In, a late game team fight or even a mid game team fight for that matter, the only target that Max needs to enfeeble is the Monkey King. Enfeebles a guaranteed hit on the Monkey King as long as you see him. Right. And that means he's doing no damage. But but the, then the advantage to some extent that Sheridans are working with is the Night Stalker and his ability to just sidestep almost everyone, position himself well in battle and jump straight on top of the Bane and get that crippling fear off. In which case, an abandoned dispels it. Yeah, that is the problem. Hmm. Theoretically, I'd say that Akramax has the better You think they didn't have won this draft here? Yeah. I think they won the draft. I can see why. But yeah, a lot of confidence coming up from the Shadows here. Their draft line lineup that's team fight heavy. There are a lot of circles that they can drop on the ground. The Wukong's Command, the Dream Call, the Vacuum, the Kinetic Field, the Static Storm. And the Blood, right? Uh, I was talking about the Shadows. So they've, they've got a lot ah, of I AoE see. that they can work with. Let's see if they can get all of that to click together. What's going to be important to start with is the Puck getting off to a good start, getting the Whale early, maybe even the Kaya if she wants to. And uh, Ooh, then that's that's a bit too much, man. That's a bit too much for my liking. Okay. I, I mean, mean I, I know Kaya gives you magic amplification as well. It gives you about 10% magic amp. Right. But so how much do you the... really want to get a Kaya plus plus a Whale? No. So Kaya doesn't stack with multiple instances of ma uh, of magic amplification. You you can't go Kaya plus Whale. I'm yeah, so multiple instances don't stack. Alright. So it's either or. So you're only going to get about or. a 10% or whatever the veil buff is. Yeah. Okay. So you choose the veil, I assume, because the build-up is a lot easier with the double null talisman. And... Well, maybe the disruptor could... Nah, I think... The, never mind. I, Forget I, think I even said that. Veil. I think you go glimmer yeah. cape on the disruptor, yeah. followed by a four star. You don't aim for the Aragonim scepter here. I, I think you definitely go Veil in the Puck because the team is going to benefit from it over the Kaya. 
it seems to be a better choice if you're something like the thinker maybe you go kaya but the puck would any day have the veil it's it's a easier build up like you mentioned the kaya it's a little awkward stuff of wizardry and over much i mean there's also the fact that the kaya only amplifies your magic damage the veil amplifies, amplifies everyone else everyone's magic damage exactly and that's what you're relying on in this yeah. game you you want the disruptor static stun to do as much as possible um Where there's no natural break mechanic on. kicking kicking in either there's no real uh, armor reduction on the side of shared builds i'm worried man i mean if this was us queuing up in a game and i saw these this lineup against us and we were on the shared builds uh, seats right now i'd be so worried i don't see a response for the terribly late game stage i don't see any way to deal with a hero with a bkb on this game and if the bane so much as gets an aphotic shield thrown on him in the middle of a battle that's it he's going to turn and enfeeble the monkey king and then no one hits anyone in the match this is it's not a good situation for the shared builds to be in if uh, blue frog and the, and his boys play their cards right they'll win this game in the next 30 minutes I I don't think it's going to be that soon though. I mean, so what I sense the shadows are going to hope for is the Monkey King getting his Battle Fury at the decent timing. I guess this is one of those games where you have to go for the Battle Fury. Also the Monkey King everyone's uh, most loved or least loved heroes depending which team he's been picked on has had a couple of changes. His base damage has been reduced by 3 Jingu mastery has been nerfed. and uh yeah he's also got a couple of new talents you get 153 dance vision uh, uh additional 153 dance vision at level 10 although that's that's incentive more for four position yeah that's instead to be a support one. yeah but i mean what what they really change and is that 50% bonus strike damage comes at level 20 as opposed to 100% bonus strike damage at level 25 the 100% at level 25 has been removed and that's been uh replaced by plus 100 armor in the wukong's command alternatively the additional wukong yeah. command ring so that's it's tempting to pick a monkey king to scale scale into the late game stage but because of the way enfeeble works a straight up flat 120 physical damage reduction yeah. i don't know man i don't think physical dps but do you think max is actually going to be putting points uh opa small uh, boo boo coming up from him took the range creep aggro but uh, yeah they're going to dish out a little damage onto the abaddon and i think this is something we're going to be seeing a lot more since so the off, off lane has become significantly harder we're going to see a uh, more and more two one twos but it's actually blue frog who joins the battle here with an early charge just to be a little bit of a nuisance but yeah there's the infeeble at level 1 max however out of position this time around under strike upon him three stacks of jingu make that four rival kicks in with the life steal but blue frog gets first blood rival still searching for that kill he is a range hero of sorts can he close the gap the infeeble there but rival He doesn't care. He's moving on to more. He's moving on to the abandon, but he's got less HP and even less damage. Here comes disruption for round two. Blue Frog with charge number two. It's two kills for the Akramas early on, and one of them was on the Monkey King. This is not looking good for Shadows at all. Right? Your Monkey King is the hero you want to keep alive through these skirmishes. He comes into the lane, takes an infeeble to his base, and has a hard enough time last sitting here. Bane can basically outlast hit the Monkey King by himself, and it's not like Opa and uh, Disruption can zone out uh, this fighting within a balance. You're with me, Zeus. So, I mean, we've seen so many teams uh, force out lane switches. If I was rival, I wouldn't have TP'd back to this lane. I would have yeah. instantly gone bottom. But yeah, is is I mean, Shadows are off. I mean, they're already working with a disadvantage, <laughs> and Blue Frog even charges at the right moment to pick up that bounty. Room. Meanwhile, on the middle lane, Kiko about to fall, but the evasion kicks in on the high ground. His salve doesn't even get cancelled, and now he's got a creep wave coming under his tower that he can life steal from as well. Mama Sita almost making the most out of his lane, but uh, Blood Sita still continuing to outlast him for the most part. I think I think Mama Sita really has to press his advantage here, but Blood Sita is going to be fine in a bit once he picks up infused raindrops or such. Uh, but that's going to be a while though. I mean, I don't think you can buy them till the first but uh, five minutes. You, the, yeah, you, you can, but Blacky is going to be okay. He just has to ferry out region, which he's doing. Picks up a stick. Uh, I mean, the problem with that is you don't want to be ferrying out region as a blood seeker. You want to use your natural talents. I, I agree. You want to well. use blood rage to farm, but. Mama Sita is doing what he should be doing, which is attack the Blood Seeker as much as possible. This time around, Kiko's got a pet. He all comes out from Mama Sita. He jumps away. And Blue Frog oh. being Pump a threat. A there. Yeah, Max has an opportunity to go in here. I mean, they didn't get the Aphoric Shield off of him, 
They've got double in people thrown down. I don't know what Dream is running away from. Dream 2 stacks are still scary though, this early on. True. I don't really blame him for getting away from that. So make believe is soloing it up versus a dark so. seer, by the way. He started off with a fair bit of consumables, so he can sort of deal with this. He's on top of the net on the last hit charts now, and even on top of the net worth board. Yeah. But uh, what's really worrisome is that the Abaddon is getting uh, a fair bit of uh, gold on this top lane as well. He's at 10 and 0 last hit, which technically for an off laner shouldn't be happening. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to see Shadil do is maybe disruption, make a rotation as soon as he hits level 4. Look, Blue Frog's already committed the charge to the top lane. If disruption on the knife sock is level 2 and even if they get the kill on the bane, it's pretty much a secured kill on the terror blade who's all by himself on the bottom lane. But uh, here we go, Opa's coming in now, they have the charge, charge will connect. Opa, he's been held in position for now, Dream is starting to get close to the opponent, he already wore off and man he took a beating getting in here. That might just cost him his life, while well, Opa's going to TP out, the bashes won't kick in. He'll survive but Dream will not. Here it is. Punishing them for the mistakes, knowing that the Bloodseeker was on his way in. Yeah. He's got a couple of free hits on him. Bloodseeker, I'm sorry, he didn't take on his way in. Getting a few hit, free hits off on uh, the Abaddon and taking him down. I, I really didn't expect the Abaddon to die at all in this lane, yeah, to be so honest. Yeah, so Abaddon didn't uh, keep the Bane alive, which is something he needs to do uh, with his shield. If I'm not mistaken, Sheridils, they kept uh, time off the Aquatic Shield and its cooldown. And they made their move as soon as the Abaddon used it on himself. I could be wrong, but that ended up working either way in favour of Shadils. And they scored a couple of crucial kills, the Monkey King stayed alive. In fact, nobody died on the side of the Shadils, and that's a small but significant victory for them. Zico, just uh, beating up on Mamacita a little bit. He's got a fair bit of magic damage, uh, sorry, physical damage coming out with the Blood Blade. Now he's even got the infused raindrops to help soak up some of his illusory orb hits. Mamacita chose to pick up two Null Talismans. His bottle is on its way back out, or rather on its way out. You can no longer bottle Korea. Yeah. Rival having uh, a fairly difficult time last sitting under his tower with the enfeeble thrown upon him. He's got like 30 damage to work with. Got the quelling blade as well, which is gonna help him to some extent. I'm not sure if it's gonna be enough. And um, yeah, it is night time though. Keep your eyes on the Night Stalker. What's he up to? Night Stalker aside, you know, I'm a little concerned that Darkseer hasn't been creep skipping this lane. Alright, he's thinking of doing it now and Make Believe just responds with an immediate metamorphosis. He's gotten a couple of hits off Khan, he's getting a bit greedy here going for the skill. Make Believe can turn back around with the self pop, but yeah. Khan is going to take a long time to get in here and the Night Stalk is going to be joining disruption as well. He hasn't been this position yet, yet. If this charge continues onward, Blue Frog <laughs> could be in trouble. He stops the gank, I mean, uh... The Night Stalker Radius wanted to secure a kill instead, he stopped one from taking it. Like Rival, life sailor. is all hell in this top lane. But I hope Shadil's are keeping tabs of uh, the Bane's mana and this is when they should probably try and make a play. Oh, what? Mama Sita whips on the face shift in the mid lane. That is good. Corruption and Mama Sita. Do they have enough to bring down the Bloodseeker? Who has a TP? Mama Sita so not yet level 6. No call just yet. Needs another creep to hit 6. And now he's got it. Yeah, with the creep, with the dream call, that it certainly got that kill on uh, the Bloodseeker. But so if you're a puck and you're up against the Bloodseeker, you should be able to control your rooms rather easily thanks to Orb. What's what's the player as a puck in the mid lane? Keep the wave proof. Yeah, I think it is to keep the wave proof. Get Top your early lane. farm and then try and make something happen. Max just puts the Monkey King to sleep. While Dream walks in his face with the Aphora Shield triggered. Big boundless strike though. Catches both of them. Max is trying to run. The Bane Sap will give him some HP on the way back out. The Orb of Venom slow though. He's got to juke this like a boss. And indeed, that's what he's going to do. Monkey King even putting a skill into the tree dance for this skill. As he's going to come down. Max will finally end up taking a hit. But the charge is still on to in his best interest to cancel as both the Abaddon and the Bane have dropped on the top side where to see Mama Sita's rotation. So if I'm not mistaken, this is the second time I'm seeing uh, Blue Frog play the Spirit Breaker. His, his read of the map um, all in all has been rather disappointing. He's not been in the right place at the right time and uh, I mean that, that should have been a kill, uh, at least a kill on one of them. And they Ouch. failed to get any. Look at that. Rival not bothered by the enfeeble and disruption comes flying from the skies. Avoid onto Dream. Dream not cut the aquatic shield. 
And even if he did, I'm not sure if he's going to survive that. Rival just bounces off the field, but here comes the charge from Blue Frog. Is it enough? And then Feeble on to Rival. Rival is dropping low. Rockwell, excuse me, Blue Frog does have the off of Venom, but the Brain Sap takes away the killing spray. And a nightmare upon the on the Night Stalker. A kinetic field comes out from Opa that try and turn this around. They're both low on HP and disruption. He does no damage with the Enfeeble. The glimpse is there, but the Brain Sap from Max ensures that he picks up a double kill. Bad idea to be giving up that two kills. That's a lot of gold. Look at this. Arms bottom is ruptured up. You've got Lake with the Metamorph. He's just standing up in his face. Three heroes across the map dying at the hands of the Radius. And Arctamus finds themselves in a dominating position once again. With a score sitting at 6 to 6. I mean, there is no pressure on the Aftermath, right? They're more than comfortable to some extent to drag this out late. Uh, sure, Park has the GPM talent oh. and whatnot, but... Well, Opa got a kill there. Draw a line to okay, went down tower. once again. It's hmm. seeking, right, sitting at just like eight. your shit. a lot of shit. early game farm coming up in the month. Look at this. Farmers is almost pretty sweet by Max. That was miscommunication by Kito. It should have been the nightmare of the blood drive. Yeah, it's so easy to lock down a farm when you have a pain. Uh, I mean, it's not as instant as a telekinesis. Oh. I, I feel bad for Dream. Because he actually got a boost of sorts with the dual lane that, I mean, that's how the Akramak oh, started, that but bottom lane. Disruption. He's on the run on one side, he does go down to make the lead, but make the lead drops to Khan. Now Buck is coming, Mama's going to dash left, right, he's going to put the sleep to Sky Queen, but Max, he's going to die to the Iron Shell himself. As Khan takes away the sleep, he drops Mama Sita, a rupture for good measure. He drops as he drops away. Can turn this around, drop an angel on the night stuff, so surge him if you have to. But Blue Frog is the choo choo trainer and he's going to get away. Just charges across the map and uh, he's holding on to that 10 minute rune in the river. See, using that uh, opponent field of creeps to sort of be I'm not sure if that's the best way to go to this game, but you probably want to have the creeps pushing back into your tower. Rival, he's gone in. They've used the primal swing along with that kinetic field of creeps. Has himself that Morning Shield which he's popped, but he isn't level 6. The backup is coming, he's going to sleep, he puts the other one to sleep now as he toggles the debuff, and Max is more than happy to beat up on the friendly neighborhood raptor. Opa in a bit of trouble, the charge is coming out as well, they want to commit to this kill. The tree does, it's only brought him closer to Opa, who gets bashed along the way out. What did you do, Rival? Why did you send your friend to the grave? Radiance bottom tower. is turning around. He has the Jingo Mastery and the Boundless Strike. But not enough to bane. I mean, they bought him down to half HP, but still not enough. Uh, how's the battle between the Bloodseek and the Plot doing? Mama just starting to fall off in terms of net worth. I'm not really sure how. Is is it because of the minus from the Seeker? Has he completed the minus in that age? Yeah, he actually yeah. went for the minus. So that's definitely adding to the net worth coming out from, this, from the uh, entire Radiant squad for that matter. Mm -hmm. Yet, despite the Midas, it's still a net worth swing in favour of the Dyer. No one coming out um, a clear winner just yet. What's going to be crucial to some extent is that when you play uh, offlaners that are supposed to provide utility, oh, God, the rupture upon him. He's got a TP out, not a stun on the side of Akramash. Damage nearly enough and can't barely survive. But, I mean, when you play two offlaners who provide some form of utility, the Abaddon being one of those offlaners who likes to build auras or maybe even a Radiance if you get it early enough, uh, the, the sort of farm that Khans has had could make all the difference in the mid game. Blue Frog just charges into the mid lane, but Mama Sita just turns around with the bane. It's a baning rift onto the bane. The crippling shear is there, if I'm not mistaken. A glimpse onto Blue Frog, while Disruption manages to bring down the bane. Beautiful stuff coming out from Terrence. This is the transition into a tier one tower. Not sure if they have enough to bring it down just yet, though. The charge is non stop running in with the Night Stalker and the Pug staring him in the face, followed up by Max walking into melee range next to his buddy to try and save him there. Mama Sita just happily jumps in and gets a two man game grip and follows it up. With Look the at this, two TPs. I'm not sure who TP first, but the main is there with the main grip. He's controlled the puck that brought him down. Charge on to disruption. He's chasing Night Stalker who's been ruptured already. That will be his death. And it should be a kill over here. Two down on the side of the Dyer. After the village. Again, take back to the village. Just there he goes. Have a cookie.
No towers being taken apart. So Dyer's top tower needs some friends. Much on this tier one. Same as you, Dyer. Looks like Doxy has picked up an arcane rune, and that's going to make this Terrorblaze life a significant amount harder. What mm -hmm. surge is this? Dyer's I mean, middle tower is under attack. Metamorphosis is up, or if Rupture is up. Along with the charge, they should be able to bring down the Darkseer rather easily. It takes either the Spirit Breaker or the Bane to make the kill happen on the Darkseer. And I think it's a kill that um, the Akramunks need well, to get. I mean, the charge you is there. for one or the other. They yeah. sent in both. Max is here along with Make Believe and Blue Frog, but that cavalry has arrived. Opa's at six. The Static Storm is dropped on nothing but an illusion. This fight could go horribly wrong for Shade Girls if the turnaround comes, but it isn't coming. As Shale Grills will send 5 heroes to the bottom lane as well. He does have the meta buffers available now though. So I mean, Rive... consider fighting. It rivals him the Monkey King. Though. The Rupture not... behind though. Mama Sita tagged with the Rupture. Kiko, which direction is he going to go to? It'll be a Mama Sita chooses not to jump to his arm. Now Kiko's the one that's left isolated. But the vacuum comes. The bond, the strike is there as well as the Wukong command. Kiko will drop first. Meta buffers from the Terra Blade. He's a fair bit of work on the back line. Struggling to see Opa going down. What a disruption. Takes out the loop drop. I mean, disruptions after the career. So they get the Spirit Breaker, they get the Bloodseeker, and they're looking for more dream. Running with the Aquatic Shield does have one available. He's been silenced by the Bane Rift. Max trying to block them off with his body. But Rival says, Thank you very much. I'll just turn upon you. A quick nightmare comes out onto the Monkey King. They're going to reduce the base of physical damage for the Shadows. They're focusing Max, however. He's woken up from the nightmare and he's angry. He brings down Max. Rival. Clearly not a morning person there, but look at this. Terrible, he's joined the party. He's popped the metamorphosis, but he's been controlled by the kinetic field. He wastes the metamorphosis, doesn't get a kill, doesn't get an objective, and the boundary strike will hold the spirit breaker. Outplayed. There's just one word to describe that at that moment. Out played by the disruptor. The metamorphosis is terrible. Walk all the way from the bottom lane to the top lane to the disruptor. Yes, I think the dinosaur for so long. The dinosaur just decides to turn around, put the static for a kinetic field on his head and walks away. That's the thing. I mean, the good thing is that they're going to get here. They sort of made it work. Yeah. The first half again for and it's the mid tier one. Dyer's so middle high. tower just got knocked yeah. down. Gets the mid mid right off the bat. I, I'm really not a fan of the Shadow Blade and the Bloodseeker. It is extremely situational. Absolutely. It's a Dyer's it's middle a tower is drowning. Yeah. If I'm it, not mistaken, those are very... no longer even applies. Oh, it applies. It just yeah. yeah, the damage reduction. Blue Frog, he's gone in with the charge. Khan's being pushed back with the red strike, so he's away. Moves out of the blood right, has friends keeping it. Are they gonna turn this around? It is night time and the is running it. Iron shell upon him. Blue Frog, is he gonna get to charge away to another lane? There's a glimpse onto the terror blade. Khan's, excuse me, Blue Frog caught with the coil. They're focusing the terror blade, the blood right on the flow, but look at this life, he doesn't care. The physical damage too much. He's even pounding away on a Maxi now as a blade wheel, and Mama Sita brings him down. They move on to the bane, who was held in position by his own. Fiend's grip. Shadows, they've been huge and they're going to get the first tier 1 tower on the back of a hugely successful deep fight. Well, the mid tier 1 did go down, so they're going to get their first tier 1 tower. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, big plays there coming out from the dark side as well, mostly because of the mech being online now. He walked in, mechs up that monkey king, even he doesn't die. Shadows just one by one picking and choosing their battles. Knowing that the Blue Frog Spirit Breaker is severely overcommitting time and again, they're willing, able, and ready to punish him. I mean, it's. Bottom tower look, is like under the attack. Spirit Breaker, he's meant to go in, possibly get the fight start on a good note. In the, the problem is he charged is in on a Dark Seal with a mech under the Tier 1 tower, right. committed with the charge and the Nether Strike, but there was no follow up no in the vicinity. Follow -up. There's a lack of communication within the team. Blue Frog says, I don't know if Blue Frog is even saying that I'm going in, but he goes in and goes and at the back. And that went uh, all sorts of wrong for Akramux after yeah. that first Blue Frog kill. Shadows are in a comfortable position right now. I mean, everything we said about the draft, draft being theoretically in favour yeah, of uh, Akramux goes out the window when you can't execute the draft. Right. But the thing is, Shadows, they are winning these fights. I mean, if this game goes on for another 15 20 minutes, these fights are going to become in mentally harder to win in my opinion. There is oodles of physical damage coming out. Yeah. Uh, the Terror Blade, I think he's got the Dragon Lance complete. It might be too less at this point, but give him more time and he's gonna hit like a truck. Uh, I'd also like to see the Abaddon just almost play the game like a dazzle. Make sure that the debuffs are there with the aquatic shield. Keep as many heals up as possible. 
soak up some damage if you have to, but I really want to see him keep his teammates alive. Loving the approach coming out from Khans. He's choosing to pick up the Crimson Guard to add to their physical yeah. damage resistance on the entire squad. That's, that's a really good item choice. I mean, the oh blink man. is tempting, but look at this. Uh, what? Um, Opa? Opa drawing Gangoli on the ground. Can you make up for it with that glint? So they got make believe. The mech was there, which is why Opa survived. And when the Wukongs come out, they should hopefully get the kill. The crippling here will enter, and there's no thunder to work with. However, Kika on the side level dives up on the disruption. Oh, he they cancel And look at this. Disruption, he cancels his TP. He flies over the trees. Provide this team vision and share this. They get two calls for losing only a disruptor. These are not trades that the Akramaks are going to be happy with. For a second there, I was questioning what the disruptor was up to. He walks They're up like a boss, being the five position support that he is. Tags, <laughs> tags the Terrorblade with a glimpse, pulls him back into a static storm, and Shadil decides, all right, our, our Terrorblade has been taken in. Let's commit with a Bloodseeker rupture under their tier one tower. That makes no sense in any Dota universe. I mean, top tower is under it, it would attack. make sense if you saw the enemy team at the opposite tier one tower without TP. But when they're right in front of you, does it make sense for in front of you? It's, 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 it's questionable decision making coming out here, especially when you're a one position Bloodseeker. If you're the bane of the spirit breaker and you did that, okay, fine, you sort of made a trade happen. You got some experience for yourself, but no, not if you're the blood seeker. But you know, credit where it's due. I feel like uh, Shadrills are playing the lineup really well. Yeah, they're, they're playing smart. They're abusing the fact that they've got that early mech online on the dark here. Yeah. They're just picking and choosing the battles in the right spot. We're looking at Shadrills capitalizing on their one team fights as well. Marvacita moves up to the top lane, takes down a tier one tower, and gets away spot to be. Now he's walking around with a blink dagger, a veil, and a set of boots. 19 minutes in, at level 13 with maxed out spells. That's all the magic damage they're going to need to deal with the Terror Blade now, moving into this big game. The problem is, they still don't have a way to make Yeah. So, I mean, you spoke about how they're using their early game, and this is something I mean. Lady Chase, you pick uh, two off-trainers, both of them will be right and the one who gets off to a better start, in this case, Khan, is going to have a lot more impact in the mid game. Dyer's bottom tower is that, like, about to flounder. Blink on Khan's end. Why not just pick up a Lotus Hub and set out? He's already gone and didn't finish the Crimson Guard. Yeah. 20 minutes in, he's, he's the most farmed hero in this game. I mean, that, that's all Khan needs to do uh, provide utility for his team, and he's doing a wonderful job of doing that so far. In this room for Shadows, I hope uh, this is not any overcommitment on their part, which leads to a couple of silly deaths. Uh, I, I think they know they're working with an advantage rival. I, I like the fact that he's going for a battle fury. That's going to ensure that the monkey can scale as well. And uh, a common misconception from the previous patch, which was that the radiant are scanning for enemies. Shadows have popped the smoke. Terrorblade is hoping to scout them out with his illusion. But it seems. It seems that it's the Akramunks know what's going on. They're just moving to the opposite end of the map. This seems to be happening very often at U side firm. Yeah, but, but look at this. Run, Rival, he's, he's got vision. He jumps across the, the treetops. There's a blood right on the floor. They glimpse the abandoned, but the kinetic field not on point. There is the smoke gang fall. Yeah. This is this is the primary difference between Akramux and Sherdils. Yeah. When when Sherdils misses three of their spells like that, Akramux never get in position to punish. When Akramux misses their spells, Sherdils are always in position to punish. This is under the tier 2 tower. The most tanky hero was being initiated upon. It's what strange. Sir? It was basically screaming the word go for Akramux, but yeah. they didn't choose to fight. I mean, it's tempting to fight, but you can also see the value in Akramux just circling this out. This, we have nothing to lose if they just slow down this game. Uh, the tablet is only going to get fatter. Hopefully, the blood seeker scales as well. And now they're going to go They pop the smoke. There's a charge up on the structure. Some sentient and just went running yeah, away. There was a dire scan that tagged uh, them. So beautiful. Radiant's down, top tower so is under yes, attack. Yes, Jesus, finding the right hand may not have resulted in a kill, but it does. Them dodging the gang and going back to farming. They go by with the 
But yeah, the, the major problem is still going to be that Bane is going to drop an Imperial on the monument. All of his usefulness in physical damage. And when the BKBs come online, which I don't think that they're going to be going for now, instead of this Manchester, and pretty much the same as he's going up, he goes going for the Radiance. Still a big window of opportunity for them to do magic damage upon them. Chirag is playing... Not a fan of the Radiance here. I do feel like the BKB would have been a lot more useful. Kiko does manage to bring down the Night Stalker, but it's Akramaks who have lost two, and both of them are the same. Tezels, they're pretty much at full HP, they can keep the push going. They're dropping Blood Rites as much as possible to ward off the push. Mama Sida clears the creep wave rather effectively as well. The wall holding back the Akramaks. Double All damage! Are in a fairly decent position. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, Kiko and his boys can do. Did he pop the darkness over there? In the time, he was going to kick off again. Not sure why the night soccer used the darkness in the night there. But, um, that was a big thing. I mean, darkness does. I have a lot of people देखो <laughs> 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 है <laughs> He lost the last game to his brother, so obviously he has a lot to make up for. Uh, the Terrorblade and the Bloodseeker for the Akramaks are playing really well. Dyer's like, top tower is about to take so the blood. So this will lose the game. But I would I say the turning point right now, till now, I think the last battle, Akramaks got four heroes in the last game. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So it was very dominant by the Angels. And right now, like, Dyer's top tower is gone. Radiant's bottom tower faces a still war. Dyer's top tower is gone. Radiant's bottom tower faces a still war. He actually caught the darks here out on the side. Dyer's bottom tower couldn't withstand the tide. Dyer's structures are fortified. 
Dyer's middle tower is under pressure. Although they shouldn't have considered going for that tier two after all, even if welcome back to the break. Marisa, you are expert. Look at this over right now. Yeah, Atomax is ready. So, and Atomax can only tie the game, but Shades can win the game. अगर ये गेम भी हार गए How to share this one? Game, 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 game. Blood seeker with the ten second DK. Did he use it? I don't know. He hasn't picked it up just yet. So ten second with the ten. Charge, charge, charge. The blood seeker. He'll have one in six gold. On the other hand, the Akram. Ah, he's fighting. 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 On the other hand, Mark's way. Akram, you know, he actually picked up the medal. Yeah, pretty sure. After the yeah. battle, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Dyer's bottom tower might last longer. Discipline this game. Thumbs up. Dire structures are fortified. Are you done? I think you're also taking it. They don't play some neat Dota. Now double check with you. Look at that discipline and escape. Are you done? Not giving up any kills. They get to tier 3. Still have a fundamental problem in their lineup. And that's taking your shot. But look, the last fight, the last fight was Aksama's fighting, I mean, in a really bad position. They really didn't need to take a fight there near the dash right. Uh, not sure what Kiko was up to in that fight. I mean, Bane commits the Fiend's grip, which is a huge portion of the Akramanxi's control in the team fight. And after using that, they still go for a fight, not too sure. Hans has also picked up his Lotus Orb, by the way. So that's that's a factor that's going to work significantly well versus that Bloodseeker and, well, actually everyone, right? You've got Thunder, you've got Mistfall, you've got yep. Charge, Leather Strike, Bane with all of his spells and the Rupture. What a perfect game to have a Lotus Orb. So, I mean, you can't take away Rupture, you can't dispel Rupture for the same. But you can send it back at him. Uh, okay. I mean, after it's cast? No, of course you got it. Before it's cast, right? Okay, apologies. Yeah, you can't dispel it. That's that's what I meant. I mean, so a lot. Let's look at it this way: a lotus orb on a monkey king that's walking up the base means that you can't cast. It means you can't cast. No, that's one way of looking at it. And then the is, you can cast it, and people will not really care. You can, but has Bane taken the level ten talent where people steal yeah. damage? So, I mean, actually, <laughs> it, it, it's like a tie. The Enfeebil is... I'm not sure how that mechanic works, to be honest. I don't know. I don't think even I've probably knows how that mechanic works. It probably just balances Radiance out, right? Yeah, it's... Nine, give nine. Bane is... Uh, really I, I'm quite curious to know, are, are the supports in this game, and it's actually worth going back to the replay and catching this, are the supports actually suggesting what is that bounty? The safe lane bounty. I, I hope they are. Because I, I don't know why Bane has no farm. I can understand he's been buying wards. The question is, has Blue Frog managed to pick up any key items? He's just got a big tank. Okay, he's got a little bit of gold. He's cleared up a BKB and he's got a good 3,000 gold to work with. So that's good at this point. I'm still worried for how Sheridan's ends this game because that last fight was taken without a Bloodseeker BKB. Right. So now he's got a 10 second BKB to run around the battlefield and walk into the enemy hero. So the other thing, I mean a couple of things. Kiko didn't have his BKB. Make Believe walked up high ground. The other problem was that Make Believe was in the center of the Wukong's command. And he was under the illusion that I'm Tetherblade and no one can touch me. But the center of the Wukong's command is where it hurts the most. That's where there's the highest density of all the And um, they all really have the damage and they can do the damage to the monkey king too much. Look at this. The Akramans have moved into the Rosh phase. And Rosh is half taken up here by... Yeah, share the look, at, look at Rosh. Go step on the flag he's offering on uh, the Abaddon. It's an easy Rosh hunt for them. Share the this. Are they going to get a tier 2 in return? Uh, looks like they won't. I don't think they should even attempt to force That's still the, the policy of their lineup. They don't really have a way to take objectives after they get yeah. kills. And now getting kills is also hard because yeah. I'm, I'm so worried to watch Kiko running about with the BKB Radiance and a Blade Mail, mm -hmm. chasing down target after target with no control on him whatsoever. It is really go time here for Aftermath. Their lineup, their draft still has a lot of advantages. And while the net worth draft may be skewed in favor of the Dyer, all of that can be eliminated by a well cast in people. The Monkey King did choose to go for the Lincoln Sphere, unfortunately for him. While the Lincoln's cooldown is a 13 second cooldown, the Enfeeble cools down in 8. So all he's got to do is Enfeeble him twice and you're sure that he gets it upon him. But with the Lincoln's and a Lotus Orb, all the single target damage could prove to be a problem. Yeah. All the single target spells could prove to be a problem for Aftermax. Then, then you're hoping that the physical damage from the Terror Blade uh, is going to be enough. Oh man, he even went for a Heaven's Halberd now. So Ouch. It's just all out shutting down that Monkey King in the team I think fight. Monkey King might need a BKB. He's going for the Silver Ring. Huh. I'm not sold on the Silver Edge. It might help him start the fight uh, on his terms. Maybe he gets the Bane uh, out of position and bring him down. Uh, Khans has picked up the greens. It's going to be They're nice for himself if he gets caught in the blood right. 
Um, oh, that's how they're going to deal with the physical damage problem. With the 25 talent on Mama Sita. <laughs> Dream Core is rapid the fire. Why not, I don't man? think so. Why not? I mean, this is, if there was ever a game for it, this is it. He's even put, picked up the Aghanim Scepter. You go for it. Here I am, okay. I, I definitely think this is a good game for it. I'm curious to see it in action. Uh, we, I think this might be the first time in Indian esports that we see Puck <laughs> having split shot or whatever that is. And the Ag is like flak cannons with no limit. Yeah, it's, it's flak cannons with insane attack speed. And now with the Axe, this is going to hurt uh, the Terror Blade as well as the Bloodseeker in particular. Shadils, I mean, they're playing unconventional Dota to stay relevant in this game. And so far, they're the ones working with a 13,000 net worth advantage. More importantly, Radiant's they've got two Lincoln Spheres and a Lotus Orb to work with as well. Now, yeah. This is going to cause some problems for Blue Storm and boys. We talked about the BKB advantage that Kiko had going for him. But if they can just ride out the Storm for 10 seconds without actually dying out, Kiko becomes vulnerable again. This sustains. Good remains. Yeah. Smoke after smoke. Sheridan's looking for something as the night time has kicked in. It's the natural night, by the way. It's been running about now since the 36 minute mark. We've got the Ags and the Night Stalker, by the way. It's gonna That's be huge. Deal. That is huge. I mean, when you look at the Sheridan's lineup, magic. one thing is he does game well. But all these heroes bring something to the Oh, they found the real Night Stalker. Of course, the Terror Blade. There's no robotic oh, shield when you need it. The Crippling Fear is there. He pops his BKB, turns what? around. There was a Lotus Arm upon disruption. That sundered it. Diddly squat. And now the Terror Blade running around with his BKB pop. It's still night time. And in fact, the Terrorists could run right back into this fight if they want to. All they've got to do is wait for that Metamorphosis to end and then go back in. Aegis is probably going to time out as well by then. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the rush clock is really like. I think it's about to be replayed right about now in the next couple of minutes. But either way, it's it's, it's so easy for Shane to even go in with an Aegis on the turn late this time around. Because he's got no BKB and he's got no metamorphosis for a hundred seconds. If nothing else, they should be looking to take a shrine. Do you think this could be a good game for the Monkey King to pick up the Nullifier, which applies mute? Mm -hmm. And it shows that you don't pop the KB or for five seconds and maybe you focus the down. I Secret Relic Helm of Fine Village, it's something to bring down it's Radiant's mute top to the 14-second cooldown. Radiant Every 14 seconds you can cast mute. That's not a bad and choice at all. Five actually. That's actually a really good idea because it's also going to give him the damage that he needs, the raw damage that yes, he needs. Yes, plus 65 damage. Unfortunately, it's not going to give you a attack speed component though, right? That would be the undoing of him if he chooses to go for it. Yeah. I consider, I mean, I'm guessing or I'm hoping that Rival pitches the idea of the Silver and just picks up an Assault. Opa with an Aghanim Scepter would fulfill that purpose though, if they absolutely need to go into the alternative. Yeah, I mean, really Opa is cutting from the right I think the star of the show so far has been Rival in the Monkey Ship. I want to say Rival in the Monkey Ship. Um, oh yeah, yeah actually, yeah, I gotta agree. Scratch that a second. I'm gonna agree with you and say it's fine. Right? And I don't like to mention that the Night Stalker has done this job. It's, it, it seems quite silly on paper that the Night Stalker has an axe that in 40 minutes, but this is exactly what a Night Stalker should do. He has axe, he has gem, he has a, a solar crash. The he's he's providing his own form of utility towards the team. They're all Radiant's enabling the monkey king. Bit by bit, they are the ones turtling this game. But turtling towards what end? What is it that they're looking for? I'm not too sure. Um, I don't know what we think is really good question. Yeah, I'm not sure that this so is the right choice. So it was thought. But is that really what's, what's worrying you at this point? I don't know. There's a Metamorphosis terrible that's getting massive. There's a Bloodseeker that sure will be broken for a while, but has a BKB and a Blade Mail. And then you've got to worry about that Shiri and Feeble that he keeps throwing upon the Monkey King. Unfortunately, Max's positioning hasn't been superb, so. Yeah. He needs to be a little bit more careful. You got heroes that are highly mobile. Like also, I get that you're playing the five position role, but... 41 minutes with just boots and a magic one is inexcusable. I mean, this could become the normal or look at this. Oh, Never gone. No. It? Baba Sita and the Fiend Scrim, but the Bounder Strike was there as part of one This is an Axe card and they're turning this around. We spoke of Max's positioning and he was woefully out of position once more. 44 seconds without the pain. 
40 per second was a no achievement for the Akramux to work with. And Mabasita just jumps in. Cyclone onto the Bloodseeker. He's going to force out a BKB. They glimpse him back. The BKB is forced. And look at that, Sheldon. They're just going to run away from this. No one to catch them. Blue Frog not committing with the charge. And Bloodseeker wasting that virgin BKB. Rival actually jumps on top of the tree, jumps right back. They're baiting spells one by one and they're just running away. They're playing some really good throws. Right this here, is really fun to watch. I haven't seen the Nature team do anything like this in the early round. They have lost the Crimson Card. But look at that! He jumps in! He catches them with the Vacuum Wall! Make believe though, gets the Sun down to Disruption. But Disruption's left the battle. The Wukongs come out on the floor. The Static Star once again. Not really catching anyone, but Sheldon's forced out another BKB and they're focusing the towers now. The Blood Ride will push them away. They are attempting to see it slowly but surely. And with the Halberd upon them, they're going to run right back. Opa, I mean, his static storms have been nothing to write home about. But the, but the kinetic, kinetic fields have, been awesome. have always been securing a retreat. And then out, a clean escape. They force out BKBs. They take, well, they don't take the KFC. They do a fair bit of damage, but they walk away. I was pretty confident that was going to transition into a much more successful team fight. Khans is just playing out of his mind today. I, I'm smiling like an idiot, not because of Khans, <laughs> but because of how well Shahidil's played. That, as a team, was some really fine Dota. And if Disruption, excuse me, if Opa managed to get up a good Static Storm, that fight could have gone horrible for the Archimons. So Mama Sita did go for the GPM talent. Now usually ah. you go for the Dagon and then you build back your items. Uh, that can be used in the late game with the go GPM talent. He's doing it the other way around, man. He's six slotted and he's trying to queue up a Dagon. Oh, apologies. Man. What you pick up the Dagon before? The you pick up the Dagon talent? before, but to get yourself an explosive early in mid game, and then later on when the Dagon and the burst damage starts to fall off, right. you use the GPM oh, talent to get hexed. Limbs. They got. Uh, I mean, just decorated the kinetic field at this point. But yeah, so you, you, you're saying pick up the Dagon early on and then you when go, Dagen discard falls the Dagon once you pick up the 420 GPM talent and build items with more value, like let's say a Hex or maybe Moon Shards for your cores. Basically, There yeah. aren't too many cores that's going to benefit from the Moon Shards. Rival could do a little good from it. But that's about... He's uh, basically called out an almost fully upgrade Dagon and that's like, yeah, first thing he's going to put the Put the veil in there, he's coming in there. Might have been just setting up this one. Oh, they've got the blood seed at the bottom of the strike and the static storm as well. On point when needed, and a glimpse, they managed to catch one more. It's Blue Frog controlled with the Baning Rift. A Lotus Orb upon the Monkey King. Bane, as well as Rival, they're going to have a little nap together. A charge comes in from Blue Frog, the Blood Ride and the Kinetic Field. Not really connecting on anyone. There they've is. got a Butterfly on the Bloodseeker, a Radiance as well, but they've brought him down through all of that. They, did he go buy back? He bought back as well. Okay. So, I mean, they're doing huge economic damage here. But what must remember that a lot of the net worth on the side of the Shadows is inflated thanks to the GPM talent on the part. This though is going to be extremely crucial for them. Um, can we take a look at the Raiden of the Shining to them? Nope. That was it. They're doing the right thing, man. I mean, while they have a 24,000 net worth advantage right now, and that's absolutely huge, it's not enough. Your hero composition isn't built to take buildings right now. It's still meant to take do magic damage and control the team fight. They're having a hard time reaching high ground. In any other lineup, with even one more physical DPS core, you'd be breaking buildings like a hot knife through butter. But right now, Shazun seems to be struggling because their rival, aka their Monkey King, has chosen to go for two defensive, two potentially defensive items in the form of a Lincoln's and a, a Silver. He's not really packing as much of a bunch as his team needs him to. So he dropped down the rupture on Mama Sita. <laughs> he shuts him up with the Yules there. And now Blue Frog, he's forced to charge away as well. The is not letting go. He's just latching on to him. The glimpse is there to pull him further behind. They're just playing with their food. They'll bring him down on one side, while on the other side, Rival is playing the rat game, doing chip damage on the tier 3. The split push has commenced now. And some, di some difficult decisions are going to be made to made here. It's got to be... Oh, Khan, the vacuum was perfect. The wall somewhere else. 
but it's still enough to bring down Max with the burst damage coming out from Mama Sita. A thunder on the turns, a metamorphosis popped as well, blood right on the floor. Opa needs to be careful on the disruption. Rivals here with the Silver Edge. It's going to proc onto the Bloodseeker. The Wukong's com command committed. They meant to bring down the Bloodseeker. They're focusing the Terrain, who's running away with his BKB pop. The Glimpse will pull him back, though. Inside the kinetic field, the Boundless Strike is there, and Mama Sita blows him up. Blows him up once again with the Dagon. That's four down, a dieback on the Bloodseeker, a laner barracks, a team wipe, and a GG call. Share bills. I have champions for the day. And it looks like Octomux are going to be going back to the drawing board.